Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one. Coward, written by the Tucker Wombat. Grand Administrator Gwalkeb, 17th appointed, undaunted of the realm of the omnipotent Emperor Kalstoth the Fourth, was having a bad day. This was his third galactic cycle on board the cramped space station. Three cycles, five demi-cycles, and twenty-three centi-cycles, to be exact. Not that he was counting. He was assigned to this backwater hub at the edge of the furthest galactic arm from his home world, because his emperor had demanded it so. In his infinite wisdom, it was decreed that the Qualkeb meet and observe the latest of the galactic space-faring races. These... Uh, Humans. It was rumored that the Emperor was particularly fond of these small, mostly hairless bipeds, and found them quite um, adorable, and found their tenacity thus far in space wide interesting. Hence, it befell Qualkeb to be transported by a diplomatic hypertube, which even at faster than light speeds took several galactic cycles. He hated the hypertube system and wished for a better way. To make contact and, crucially, impart on these tiny humans who is the real power in the galaxy. It wasn't them. By the time Gwalkeb had arrived in the main diplomatic station, the humans had been contacted by at least half a dozen other races, most of them closer to them in galactic geography. Amongst them, the Salstren, or those nefarious spy masters, slightly larger than a human, that he could tell, anyway. Their bodies had been genetically altered some millennia ago to make them nearly impossible to see. It wasn't that they were invisible. Exactly. Rather, one's eyes could not figure out where to focus, or even to determine if there was anything to focus on. If you strained for some effort, their bodies had the appearance of constantly fluttering transparent fabric, and the exosuit sound modifications to their voice made it impossible to figure out where in the room that they were speaking from. It was very disconcerting. Gwalkeb rounded a corner, his mind preoccupied with making the required ducking motions to not slam his head against the upper bulwarks of the corridor. Tiny humans, tiny stations, after all. He was not paying attention, therefore, when he bowled over Assassin Lath, the Sastern ambassador, he stopped only when he heard a distant, oh, and the clattering of his exosuit against the ground. From what he could tell, he accidentally shoved the ambassador halfway across the hallway. Suns and stars, Gwalkeb, hissed the Sassanol from some indeterminate point in the room. Have you no control over yourself? His voice rasped in common galactic, sounding as ethereal and strained as the hum of the air purifiers of the Fritz. Ambassador Sassanolf... They boomed Qualkeb, looking down at the floor and focusing his three eyes to try and figure out where he had fallen. My apologies, I didn't see you there. You never do, Mr. Slaster. Qualkeb did not appreciate the ominous meaning in that message. He had the impression that the ambassador had stood up by now, but he wasn't sure. I only wish you humans were as imperceptive as your species. What do you mean? asked Qualkeb, shifting his weight from his left legs to his right, part impatience, part discomfort, as the higher G the humans preferred was a strain on his larger body. Nothing. Things, replied the assassin lath. I merely hope that my transfer would go through faster. Humans make me uncomfortable. Assassin's transparent body, such as it was, practically shimmered in harsh tube lighting. Gwalkeb knew enough about assassin lath that it was a byproduct of extreme emotional response, but wasn't sure of which emotion. Gwalkeb was taken back. 
Something makes the Sastel turn uncomfortable. Why, Sastelnath, you disappoint me. Yes, their bodies are disgusting, inefficient, and weak. They are nothing to be concerned about. Certainly, nothing to be worrying the Sastelan Council. The Emperor scarcely considers them more than a curiosity. So you say... Grand Administrator, excuse me, the humans are in the canteen, if you're looking for them. The Ambassador deftly sidestepped Gualkeb's massive girth and shifted away. Gualkeb could swear that he heard faint echoes of the Salsan snicker, but shook it away. He continued down the corridor, ducking every several meters or so. He did hunger. A protein bar would suffice. Gualgeb opened up the doors to the canteen. Oh, you son of a witch, you always have a full house. The harsh exclamation slapped Gualgeb in the face. Human speech was harsh, collateral. It was unpleasant to listen to, unfaltered by a universal translation device. He clicked his on and lumbered past their table. He shuddered as he heard the horrible laughing noises ricocheting across the metal tube. Not always, but when I do, you should know better than to try and go all in, Jensen, said the other human as he raked several hundred tiny multicolored chits from the middle of the table. Your deal, freaking Kai, I swear to God your lucky streak will run out someday, and when it does, you're going to be doing latrine duty for a solid month. Talk is cheap, Jensen, loud deal, I'm hungry, and these wings have been staring at me for like five minutes. The human Kai turned to a plate of, um, something. Misshapen lumps of protein, it looked like, dripping with a suspicious red liquid. Not blood, he didn't think. The human doused more sauce onto the wing from the bottle in the center of the table. He opened his tiny mouth, one of teeth, and chewed around the bone of whatever animal it was, slurping and licking the protein like a savage. Oh god, these are good, just like my girlfriend used to make before I deployed. Yeah, how's the heat? asked Jensen, shuffling the game icons in his hand. Gualkeb remembered what they called cards. Oh, not bad. Spicy, but there's still flavor. Pretty sure I can taste garlic. Nothing too out of control, even for you. You want some? I offered a half-eaten morsel to Jensen. Beads of sweat were forming on Kai's forehead, and he began making impolite sniffling noises as he waved the wing in front of his friend. Nah... No thanks. I know better than to accept anything you'll put in your mouth, you freaking pepperhead. I'll get heartburn, and that'll make my twelve hour coming up even worse than usual, trying not to crap my suit. Jensen began distributing the cards around the table, first to Kai, then to the two other humans that were with them, similarly engorging themselves in plates of their wings. Besides, I don't want to get sauce all over the cards. Gotta get better at being spicy replied one of the previously silent humans in between disgusting chewing and slurps. The red sauce was pouring on his chin and facial hair. Gualkeb shuddered and pushed a button on the outer food dispenser. A perfect beige rectangle materialized in the slot. Gualkeb reached in and grabbed it and turned to leave. I'm plenty good at being spicy. At least that's what your mom said last night. Hey, Keb, come here for a second. Jensen interrupted his conversation and turned to look at Gualkeb as he thundered past. Have you ever had earth wings? Gualkeb bristled at the incorrect form of his given name. If only this were not a designated diplomatic station. I do not partake in your disgusting food habits, human. We of the Empire prefer pure, unadulterated food. It makes us better warriors. He held up his protein bar. Yeah, so you say, but you should really try this. The hot sauce, in particular, might be right up your alley. Jensen looked around the table, grinning. Gualgeb thought he saw one of their eyes twitch close as he did so. All the humans were looking at him now, but they had not stopped eating. One of them reached for the brown bottle and drank from it. Another in terribly impure food stuff. That beer... I will not, Gualkeb turned to exit. To his left, the large blue sphere of the human homeworld filled the window. He imagined an entire world of humans, billions of them slurping and chewing protein chunks covered in sauce. Gualkeb was losing his appetite. What's the matter, Keb? Are you a coward? Kai called after him. 
Walkeb, Heavy Gold, Many Things, Defender of Hell Prime, the Terror of Guacanwani and Magnet Sphere. He was even granted the title of Bone Sunderer after he single handedly wiped out a platoon of heavily armed Koloshi dragoons with his psionic saber on Yalsagonia 7. He had led conquests on planets, sentenced entire empires to extinction in their courts, and in his 743 cycles of existence, had amassed a reputation of one of the strongest in the empire. No fool would be ignorant enough to call Gwalkeb a coward, and yet here they were, four tiny backwater aliens slurping their lunch and wasting time with frivolities, staring at him with half-drunken smiles. They have issued a challenge to the Bone Sundra, but he was sworn by death oath to not break the diplomatic primary of the station. Rather than reaching down and cracking each of the humans in half like one of their pencils, he turned and looked down. He pointed at the red and yellow bottle in the middle of the table. That uh, is hot sauce of which you speak. Ah, this, yep, replied Kai. Gonna put it on your page brick there. It might actually give it some flavor for once. He sniffed again, loudly this time, tears in his eyes. Gwalkeb had thought that it was a sign of weakness, the human expression of terror or grief. He looked around and saw that everyone, save for Jensen, was similarly expressing. He was not sure why they were doing that. Was it a sign of terrorized respect for his titles? Was he being mocked? Humans were confusing. Give me the bottle, human, thundered Gwalkeb, holding out his large paws. Jenshin reached over and grabbed it and placed the bottle in the center of his hand. The human hand was dwarfed by the size of Gwalkeb's. Gwalkeb inspected the tiny bottle, a human in a very large hat wearing a yellow suit and a red tie. Large red lettering of what he assumed was a human language emblazoned the top of the bottle. Inside, a red liquid swirled and bobbed. Gwalkeb put two of his fingers on the lid and twisted it open. A pungent aroma hit his nostrils. He bristled. This reeks of impurities, human. How do you even digest this? No matter, he growled as he dumped the entire bottle onto his tongue and swallowed. He tossed the bottle to the floor. It clattered across the polished metal like a discarded toy. Human food might be full of impurity, but they required remarkably similar nutrition as the rest of the galaxy. If a human could eat it, so could he. The humans watched, expressionless, but for the occasional sniffle, Jensen casually drank his beer. Walkeb stared back. What were they doing waiting? Was he supposed to say something? Ah, he remembered that in human society it was considered polite to remark on how delicious their food is, even if it was impure, adulterated swill. Ah, yes, this certainly tastes... Ah, ah, ah. Spat Gwalkeb, his tongue began fleeting as if it were beginning to burn. He coughed and sputtered as his insides began doing the same. Flames licked his stomach as it churned. He felt as if he was being incinerated from the inside out. The mucous membranes in his eyes began to swell shut, and his nose began reacting to the putrid pungency. He fell to one knee, hacking and coughing. As the humans watched, smiles festooned across their idiotic faces. Well, usually folks aren't dumb enough to drink the whole damn bottle, remarked Jensen as Gwalkeb coughed, spat, and gargled curse words. The slasher and guy only had a drop or two, and he lit up like a Christmas tree. He was pretty pissed that we could see him clear as day. Damn, wet blanket. Yes, this is poison, hacked Gwalkeb, clutching his throat and head as the room spun. His insides felt like they was being incinerated by plasma cutters. No... This is hot sauce, as humans have been using it for thousands of years. What can we say? We like spicy food. Well, some of us anyway. Kai looked at Jensen, who extended his middle finger at Kai in response. This will not stand. You will be punished for this attempted murder. Walkeb growled, stumbling to his feet. He towered over the human table, still coughing and drooling from his eyes and nose. Jensen rolled his eyes. Yeah, sure, buddy. Go ahead and tell your emperor that Gwalkev, Grand Administrator, and 700-some-a-year-old bone-smashing warrior was spelled by a food that us humans eat for breakfast. I'm sure that'll go over well. I laughed. I guess the nickname we gave you guys when we first ran into you in Tal City was pretty accurate. How are you feeling? Uh, 
teddy bear. Gualkep could only cough in response as he stumbled out of the canteen, waving his arms about desperately seeking relief. He wasn't paying attention when he slammed his large head on top of the bulwark just outside the canteen, making a loud clang noise. He could hear the humans bursting into their laughter before the door shut. Not a good day at all. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.